We are in Rome at ESC 2016, and at least the weather is cutting us a break this afternoon. We have a little breeze now. Something where the breeze has been kind of behind the back for Taver for a while. It's been a quick adoption of a relatively short period of time. But in the last year or so, a number of issues have been raised that people like my guest today have been evaluating. So let's talk about when TAVR is not enough, kind of a step toward understanding when concomitant mitral regurgitation needs treatment. And it is the uh, CME offering for the Jack Cardiovascular Interventions August 8th issue. And to talk about this, I am with Dr. Ignacio J. Amat Santos, who is an MD, a PhD, and you're with the Institute of Heart Sciences, University Hospital, Valladolid, Spain. Well, let's start with some background first. Why did you undertake this study? Well. Thank you very much for asking me uh, and giving me the opportunity to share my experience. We started with this research because we think that a lot has been said on TAVR patients, but actually we only talk about the aortic valve. This is a degenerative cardiac disease, this is a general problem, so we have to talk about all the valves, the multivalvular disease in these patients. And also we are performing CT to these patients, to almost all these patients, and we say nothing about the mitral apparatus. So this was an opportunity and we tried to catch it. By the way, one of the important things to note up top is what did you use to describe significant MR? Well, we used echo to describe the, the degree of mitral regurgitation as we have always done. But we included CT to describe the anatomy of the mitral apparatus, especially calcifications, because this is the gold standard for calcium determination in the cardiac structures, as you may know. And it was a score of what, like two or over? Three or over? We created a score that we previously described a couple of years ago in Jack Imaging. And in that score, we went from zero to three, from known calcium to a high degree of calcification. Uh, depending on the distribution and also the amount. Okay, so describe the study. So in this study, what uh, we found is that mitral regurgitation is frequent in patients with aortic stenosis undergoing TAVR, and in half percent of these patients, it will improve. But in the other half percent, it will not, and it has a, an amazing impact in the mortality of these patients. We found for, uh, we searched for uh, factors that may help us to determine who will improve, in the CT parameters, uh, we found that the calcification of the leaflets and the annulus for, uh, at a score of two or three degrees uh, will predict the persistence of mitral regurgitation in these TAVR patients, which has an impact in mortality, as I have previously said. But also we found with these uh, imaging uh, parameters that in about 13% of these patients, we can repair the mitral valve uh, uh, with mitral clip in some of them or with balloon expandable valves in some other uh, patients. Of course, we have to perform a prospective study to determine better this right. issue, but this is a very important finding from our point of view. So you showed increased mortality, however, in an accompanying editorial, uh, Dr. Mavromatis, who was uh, writing it, was not sure you were able to adequately statistically adjust for uh, many prognostically important comorbidities mm -hmm. uh, in these patients with severe aortic stenosis. How do you respond to that? Do you, do you think you, you, you got enough information so that you're pretty confident in your findings? We did not have enough information as any study have had before because it's very complex to determine the factors that are impacting mortality. That's why uh, we cannot see that the improvement of MR is associated to an improvement in mortality. But we see a decrease in cardiac mortality, in the proportion of cardiac mortality. Uh, the variation of proportion of cardiac mortality in different studies probably determined uh, that in different studies we found totally different uh, results in global mortality. I don't know if it's too complex to explain, but I think it's a difference in cardiac mortality and global mortality, and that's the issue. So what did you take away from this? I mean, what have you learned out of this that you didn't know when you started? What we learned is that mitral regurgitation cannot be a uh, forgotten when we are talking yeah. about TAVR patients. Uh, it has a huge impact in mortality and we have some tools that we were not using before to determine if it is going to improve or not and how can we treat it better. This for the treatment of younger patients is extremely important. So your, one of your first papers was in Jack uh, Imaging, this is in Jack Interventions. What are you going to do next? Are you going to stay with these, the same idea and try and find out more? Of course, we are going to continue with these projects. We are very much focused in multivalvular disease in TAVR patients, and we are working in several multicenter studies in this issue. And also, we are creating a score 
that can help the clinicians in other centers to predict what's going to happen with the mitral regurgitation in their patients after TAVL. Well, the paper, which as I said, is the CME offering for the August 8th issue on Jack Interventions. Please look that up and also uh, the original Jack Imaging uh, paper, which by the way, will have the citations for both right after I say. For Cardio Source World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.